Welcome back to the video series on how to create a request definition. Um, in the previous video, I provided you with a user story for this request. Um, so as a quick recap, your provisioning manager requested to have you create a hardware and software request form to be available for everyone in the self-service portal. Together, you worked on populating a service request workbook that we will now refer to when creating this request definition. So the first thing we're going to do is log into Remedy Force. We're going to click on the Remedy Force Administration tab, and we're going to go to Configure Application and select Request Definitions. Now, one thing that may happen here is that you'll open the Getting Started tab, and this is a great screen that you can use to follow the step-by-step -step process in order to complete your request definitions. But if you wanted to hide this tab from appearing every time you log in, uh, to the re request definition section, you can simply add a check in this box and then close the tab. Uh, and then going forward, it'll never come up again. If you decide that you want that tab back, you can just click the little blue eye uh, and it'll come back. And you can then at this point uncheck the box uh, and then go ahead with your, with your request. Now again, as I showed you in the previous video, um, I already have a service in my environment um, and I'm trying to be consistent. So I'm going to keep the service called End User Services and, and the offerings will have different names. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you look at this screen, when I create my new one, I'm going to want to be consistent as well when it comes to my numbering. Um, so as we saw in the previous video, they are going to have most likely three requests. Now we're only going to work on the first one, which is the hardware software request form. So we have to make sure we put a one uh, in front of it because our upgrade request may have a two and then the executive one may have a three. You kind of want to keep that continuity uh, as, you, as you create these requests. All right, so when you're ready to go, you're gonna click on the new icon. On a separate screen, I have uh, the service request workbook open and we're gonna leverage the information from that workbook to create this request definition. So let's start with the title. The title is going to be Hardware or Software Request Standard. And the description is going to have this information. And we can't save this request right now because we still have five required fields that we have to populate. So let's look at the first one, Service. We know from the spreadsheet that this will be called End User Services. So we can click the little drop down and we can select the end user services. We know it already exists because we've used it already on the other request definitions that we have. The service offering, however, will be new. We'll have to create it. So let's go ahead and click on the little plus. And for the name, we're, uh, this one will be called provisioning uh, dash standard. So now if we click on the specifications tab, you'll notice that these two fields are already populated. Because we created this uh, service offering from request definition itself, it's already leveraging the service of end user services, and it knows that this is going to be a service offering. So these fields are already pre-populated for you. The owner, we know it will be Marsha Brady. And now the hours that we're looking for are eight to five. And the start date will be today's date. And the end date, we have here is January 1st, 2020. And everything else is fine, so we're going to save this. All right. Now, our next required field is category. Before we create category, I just noticed I forgot to add my number one in front of my title. So the category is going to be called order hardware or software, and we know it doesn't exist. We're going to go here and actually create the category. And we're going to call it order hardware or software, and I added my dash, and we're going to make this available for ser uh, service requests displayed in self-service. So we're going to save this. And now we have our third required field. Now we can focus on the incident template. So let's click on the little plus. 
The name of this template will be called provisioning-hardware or software. And we are going to make this a system template. And in case you're wondering what that is, this allows this template to basically be hidden from your staff members. So when they're working in the console on a ticket of some sort, and let's say they want to apply a template for some reason, if they search with some of these keywords, this template will not show up. That means they can't leverage this from the console. It's only going to be used by the system in cases like this for uh, request definitions. So now we're going to add a description. And I'll just scroll down to the fields. So the first field that we're going to populate is the owner ID. And the queue that we're going to be using is called pending approval. And we're going to be doing that because we don't want anybody to be notified when this ticket gets created uh, initially. It's going to go through a pr an approval process. Our next field is impact and that'll be low along with urgency. Now the next field is a category field. And this is going to be set to hardware software provisioning. And again, if you don't have this category, you'll just have to go to the category section and create it. We'll add that. And finally, status is going to be set to pending approval. All right, now we can save this template. And we've now completed four of the five required fields. So now let's create the service request template. And this will be a new template as well. And we're gonna call this one uh, the same name as the incident template, except I'm gonna add R, uh, RD at the end, request detail template. It's already detecting the incident template that we just created. We don't have to do anything else. We can just save it. And now we've completed the five required fields. We can now save this request definition. Now before we continue filling out the request definition, let's go to the templates and create the other four task templates. We're going to need those later as we start building this request definition. So we're going to click on Home, and we'll go to Configure Application Templates. You'll notice we still have the Request Definition tab here that we can always access it when we're done. So now we're going to create a brand new template, and this will be the first task template that we create. What we're going to do is create one, then we're going to clone it three times and just change the one field or two fields that we need to. So we'll select task and we're going to call this task the provisioning hardware task template and we're making this a system template and for the description we're going to call it template to be used for the provisioning hardware or software request form. Same verbiage that we use for the other templates. And we have five uh, fields to populate. So the first one will be owner ID. And this task will be assigned to the provisioning queue. So our provisioning, add. And our next field is the impact. This is set to low. And now we'll select the urgency. That's also set to low. We'll add that. The fourth field will be category. And this category will be called hardware. And then for description, we talked about possibly adding uh, some verbiage for description. So let's go here and add the verbiage. So this task, once it gets assigned to the provisioning queue, they have steps to follow. 
and we're going to add this to the task template so that all the individuals who work these tasks can follow a standard. So basically, if we review our description here, uh, the first step is to update the status to accepted. Uh, step two, verify if we have any hardware in stock. Step three, if there's no hardware, update the status to in work and then order the device, enter the PO number in the appropriate field on the task record. Once the device has been received, update the status to complete it. And if you do have uh, the hardware in stock, uh, just simply update the status to complete it. Pretty straightforward steps. We're going to add that. So now we can go ahead and save this template. Now we're going to clone this template and we're going to make the changes to the fields that need to be adjusted, like the category field and possibly the description field. So now I'm going to clone this one for the IT support team. Uh, this will be the hardware one for the IT support team. So I want to call this one IT support dash hardware task. And for the owner, we're going to update this to the IT support queue. And obviously they have a different description. And in their description, uh, to keep things consistent, basically they're being told that the client has ordered hardware. Hardware is now available and ready to be installed. Please update the status to completed once the hardware is installed. Pretty straightforward. We'll make the update. And then we'll save this task. So now we're going to clone the IT support hardware task template and we're going to create the IT support software task template. Now we can save it. And we have all four task templates completed. Two for the provisioning team, one's for hardware, one's for software, and then two for the IT support team, again, one's for hardware and one's for software. We can close the template tab. Now let's continue populating our request definition. Our next area of interest on the general information tab uh, would be the icon. So we're gonna upload uh, an image that I already have on my computer for this request. Alright, so here's the image I'll be using. So I'm going to save this. Now normally what, what I like to do as an administrator is I like to be able to go to self-service and see the progress as I'm creating this. Um, now if I make this online right now, it'll be available for everybody because by default the entitlement is set for all accounts and all users. And I'm going to make sure that only the administrator can actually have access to this. Now that that's set, I'll return to the general information tab and I will make this um, I'll make this deployed and online. Now when I do save it, I can go in self-service now and view it and I'll be the only person that can actually see the updates as I'm creating this request. Now we know that this request definition is going to follow an approval process. Um, but we're not going to put a check mark here yet. We want to make sure that we build it. Everything looks fine. We test it. Once it's all working fine, then we'll add the approval to it afterwards. So we'll leave this blank for now. So we already discussed the entitlement tab. So again, just a quick review on this. You can make this request available to all accounts or selected accounts if you want to. Uh, once all accounts is selected, everything here is grayed out. You can then fine tune it to allow it to be visible to certain profiles or certain permission sets if you want or all the users in that account. So we had previously selected the profile system administrator so only I will have access to this request while I'm building it. 
let's look at the display options tab. This is where you're, you're able to display additional um, fields on the request, such as the instructions, which we know that we want our instructions to be visible. So we're going to put a check mark there. Um, we don't want the user to select the, their own approvals. You know, there's certain fields we don't want on this request. So we're going to leave everything else blank. Um, date required, quantity. We don't need those on this request, but we do want the attachments in case they want to add an attachment. We're not going to make them required. And finally, apply quantity and price. We don't need that for this request either. When you're done selecting this, let's just save it. Now, before we move on to the input tab or fulfillment tab, let's have a look in self-service to see if this is even visible. So I'm going to go here and right click, open a new tab. All right, so let's have a look at the request of service. And if you look under the I want to order hardware and software, it's visible. Now if I select it, I should be able to see my new icon and my request definition that I created. And obviously if I select it, we won't have any questions yet. But at least we know that it's working, um, it's up and running. We're able to, to now revert back to it every so often as we make our changes.